Hello aviators, welcome back. So in this video we're going to talk about LPV approaches, or more accurately, GPS approaches flown to LPV minimums. Uh, there's a lot of confusion around these approaches. Are they precision? Are they not precision? Um, and so I want to try to clear some of that up. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Traditionally, precision approaches were approaches that had vertical guidance. Any approach with vertical guidance was a precision approach, and approaches that didn't have vertical guidance were non-precision approaches. But we are in a different world now. We have GPS, and with GPS comes this new category of approaches that fall on the non-precision approach side of the line uh, that are called approaches with vertical guidance. You know, there's LNAV plus V, or LNAV VNAV, or LPV, depending on the equipment you have. But it's technically a non-precision approach. And even I myself used to say, hey, if it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And it's, you know, LPV approach is nearly as precise as an ILS and gets you to essentially the same altitude AGL, so what gives? What's the difference? And so I'm here to give you something to remember. On an ILS approach, which is thoroughly through and through a precision approach with lateral guidance provided by a localizer, vertical guidance provided by a glide slope, and robust approach lighting to help you transition to the runway environment if you're flying that approach anywhere near minimums. Okay, and that last component, the approach lighting system, is huge. In some cases, it can be everything. So just because you can create an LPV approach to any runway anywhere in the world, to any sidewalk if you really, really wanted to, and you can have needles that are nearly as precise as a localizer and a glide slope, that's why it's a localizer performance with vertical guidance approach. It's still not as precise when you're transitioning out of those minimums. Take, for example, a GPS approach to LPV minimums that I flew recently back into Nevada County, and the weather was pretty much right at minimums. One, seven, two, three, Zulu. Wind, variable, at five knots. Peak gusts, one, three knots. Visibility, more than one, zero. Sky condition broken at 500. Overcast at 1,300. Temperature 5 Celsius. Dew point 4 Celsius. Altimeter 3. Once I got the weather and realized the uh, approach was going to be to minimums, I set up the autopilot so that I could think in front of the airplane, uh, talk in front of the airplane, and act as CEO of the operation. When I get to Ulehi, it is going to be a descent to the minimums of 3,606 feet, which is 475 feet uh, AGL. Um, if I don't see the runway at 3606, I climb straight ahead to 39, then a climbing right turn to 6,000. How low, how long, and which way? All right, we expect to see a glide path capture at a Ulehi. I know that the glide slope, or glide path, rather, is arm, uh, because the GS here is on the bottom. Remember, in the KAP-140 autopilot, anything on top is what the autopilot's doing. Anything on the bottom is what the autopilot is armed to do. This thing S turning through my course. I could do better. All right. Um, okay. We're just trying to reduce the workload. It may be true that I can hand fly this better than the autopilot's doing it, but the good news is I can talk to you. I can be CEO of the aircraft. I can monitor engine performance. I can keep my brain on while the autopilot is helping me in this single pilot IFR environment. All right, we're one mile away. When we get to Ulehi, we expect to see that glide slope come down, and we ex expect to see the autopilot capture it. If the autopilot does not capture the glide slope, I will have to disconnect the autopilot and hand fly the approach to minimums. Nevada County traffic, Skyhawk 5218 Foxtrot is uh, approximately four miles west of the field, 4,300 inbound on the RNAV 7 approach, Nevada County. Let's see it capture this glide path. We're gonna have to be Johnny on the spot if it does not. 
Walking down here. Let's go, Johnny. Let's go. It says it's it says it's got it. All right, there it goes. All right, we're starting our descent. I'll go a half turn in on the mixture. Taxi light, nav light's coming on. Looking for the runway. I don't want to. Um, let's go power back. I want to be careful. I control my speed in this descent with the autopilot. I don't want to, you know, end up at minimums at 140 knots. So. Nevada County traffic, Scott 5218 Foxtrot, uh, about two miles to the west now, inbound. Uh, we're 4,000 feet. We're descending through the cloud layer here inbound on RNAV runway 7 approach, Nevada County. Okay, we're 3,900, descending 3,600. 3,800, descending 3,600. Three thousand seven hundred descending three thousand six hundred. Runway in sight. Woo! Good single pilot resource management here is to set the autopilot up to fly the approach so that I can spend my time as CEO of the airplane, thinking in front of the airplane, talking in front of the airplane, uh, you know, accomplishing, completing checklists and scanning for the runway in between monitoring all of those things. So that's exactly what I did. And what you'll see here is with the autopilot flying the approach, as it had lost the course slightly to the right, it made a correction back to the east southeast that had my heading the heading of the aircraft an additional 10 or 15 degrees to the right of the course which is why when the runway came into view to me it was a head movement to the left to see it uh, there was no robust approach lighting system to see there's just the narrow runway that exists here in nevada county i mean it's plenty of runway it's a great runway it's just not the same as transitioning to a strobe rabbit through the fog as you might uh, during an ILS approach into an airport like Oakland for example um, so I think it's really important that for for us to remember that precision requires three things it requires that precise localizer type signal it requires that precise glide slope or glide path but it also requires some precision tools to transition from that instrument flight over to visual flight and use normal maneuvering to then land the airplane there's a reason why 91175 has a long list of things that you have to see before you can leave the da or the mda uh, and you just simply don't have those things on LPV approaches as you saw in the video we watched today. So anyway, hopefully that helps you think, uh, think about a different way to teach it. Definitely get our Ground School app. We've got private and we've got instrument coming very, very soon. So you got to get that app and check it out. If you want early bird pricing on the instrument, you should get the app now. Uh, remember to leave a comment below if there's a video you want to see. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. And most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.